Hey there, my name is Kristen Tripp, the Executive Director at the Da Vinci Experience Science and Arts Summer Camp. This training video is about expectations in the summer camp. If you've made it this far through our training videos, odds are you now understand what is on the staff website, you've read through it, you understand what a typical camp day schedule looks like, you understand what is expected of you in terms of paperwork, payroll, and reaching out to ad admin, and you are basically ready to rock for the first day of summer camp. But before we wrap up these trainings, we're just going to go over some basic expectations for teachers and counselors for the summer. So a few important things to remember is that when we work at Da Vinci, we are supporting families in our community and we are also helping children gain independence, continue to foster a lifelong love of learning, and of course, grow independence. So it's a great job and it's an important job. And so we wanna make sure that we are executing it successfully and in a way that reflects well on us. So how are some ways to do that? Well, we've already talked about it before, but if you go under the forms tab and you click on your contracts, teacher and counselor, you can get information about what is expected of you during a camp day. You are expected to sign this. And if you are not meeting these expectations, we will get together and have a conversation about what is expected to you in, in a camp day and why it's not happening. Additionally, it's important that everybody upholds our code of conduct. Now, more specifically, we're going to get into a few specific details. So counselors, when you are at Da Vinci, it is extremely important that you are speaking appropriately. Not only that you don't have any inappropriate language and that you're talking to the kids in a way they would understand, but also remembering age groups. For instance, the older group, senior groups, might like to joke around. They might get sarcastic. They might get a little sassy. And so it's fun to have some jokes back and forth. The younger group doesn't understand sarcasm. It's not developmentally appropriate yet. So being more silly and fun and loving is better in the junior room, whereas you can be a little bit more sarcastic and jokey in the senior room, respectfully, of course. Another thing counselors want to remember is that when you are at Da Vinci, you are assigned to a specific classroom. Now that classroom could change. One day you could be in the intermediate room and the next week you could find yourself in the junior room based on schedule, if somebody's called out, whatever it might be. But typically you have an assigned room and the teacher in that room is your direct supervisor. So you need to be talking to that teacher if you need to leave campus for some reason, have some type of emergency and need to go, need to contact somebody, or want to go on your break, et cetera, et cetera. You need to be contacting or reaching out to your teacher about any type of issue or question you might have. If the issue goes above that, like it's a payroll or admin question, of course, you can then ask your uh, uh, director, which is typically me, but you can also email us as well. Now, as a counselor, your job is to support your lead teacher in the classroom. So you want to be modeling appropriate behavior to children, reading books, coloring, helping with activities, getting things for the teacher if they need something. If you are under the age of 18, it means that you cannot be left alone with children, which means that if you are working with a teacher, that teacher has to stay in the classroom. Meaning that if you have to, if, if you need more glue in your room, but nobody outside of your room knows that and the glue is not in your room, you're the one that needs to go get it or find the appropriate people. And it's important that you do this quickly and efficiently. Additionally, other counselors are going to be working at this camp alongside you, sometimes in the same room, sometimes outside of the room. If you have a friend who's in a different room than you, like you're in the junior room and you have a friend in the intermediate room, you can absolutely see them in passing and you can see them out on the playground. But it is important that you stay in your room. It is not helpful for a teacher when they look up and they see that they have 20 children and they have lost their counselor and their counselors in the other room talking with someone and the teacher has no way of getting them back. That is not how we would support our teacher. If something like that happens, we will have to have a conversation later down the road in the summer. Another important expectations for counselors is playing with kids outside. As counselors, you are not here to play with each other. And this goes for CITs as well. Anybody who is a CIT or counselor, all of this information is for CITs as well as counselors. If you are a counselor or CIT outside, you are not supposed to be playing with other counselors or CITs outside. You are to be playing with the children. And you guys can all play with them together, but it's important that you don't have side games as counselors that 
other campers can't join or that they join, but it's mostly between you and your friends. You are here to support the children, play with the children, and create fun games and activities for the children. Now, the other important thing to note as a counselor is phone usage. If you are a counselor and you are under the age of 18, your phone will not be on your person throughout the day. Instead, you can clock in with your phone and then you can hand your phone over to your main teacher at the beginning of the day. That teacher is going to put your phone in a phone pouch and it's going to be there for the rest of the day. At your break, you have access to your phone, but you need to check in with your teacher. You cannot grab it yourself, your teacher will. So at break time, you can go to the teacher. This is also a great time for the teacher to document what time you've gone on break and for you to double check that it's still okay to go on break at this time. Your teacher will then give you your phone. You can go on your break and when your break finishes, you can give the phone back to the teacher. And at the end of the day, of course, you can have your phone released to you and you can go home. If you are above the age of 18 and you are a counselor, the expectation is that your phone stays in your backpack and is not supposed to be used throughout the day. Now, as a counselor or CIT, once again, if you are under the age of 18, when you leave, you need to check in with your supervisor. And typically any, any counselor at all should be checking in with their teacher before they leave for the day. If it is 3.15 and your teacher is still saying goodbye to parents, talking about a behavior or helping clean up and they turn around and you are gone, now they also have to be worried that you did not get picked up by the right person or that you're missing somewhere. So it's extremely important if you are a minor to check in and make sure that the teacher knows you are leaving for the day. Teachers, now we're going to talk a little bit about expectations during the summer camp day. Counselors, at this point, if you would like to, you can end this video. Teachers, it is extremely important that you have read through and understand the curriculum and that you have prepped the day's materials, lessons, videos, etc. before you come to work. So before you leave on whatever day it might be, you want to be checking in and you want to make sure that you have everything ready. So let's say the camp day ends at three. You're not done saying goodbye to parents until about 3.10. You can spend the next 15 to 20 minutes getting everything ready, going through things. And then in the morning when you come in, you can take five minutes to get that ready and then go. If you are coming in in the morning and you don't know what you're teaching yet, that's a big red flag. And it is definitely goes against the expectations of a teacher. If we see something like this, we will be pulling you aside to talk about expectations throughout the summer. If you're having a hard time managing your time and you're not feeling like you have enough time to go through the curriculum, that's another conversation and you can absolutely have a conversation with your director or myself about that time management and we can work on that together as a team. Teachers, it's also important that you are the ones monitoring safety out on the playground and in the classroom. Counselors are here to support you, which is great. And of course, if anything occurs, they should be coming to you with whatever information they need to. However, it's really important that you are monitoring the safety. Out on the playground, you don't necessarily have to be playing with the kids. You can sit back, you can watch over them, you can circulate around the playground, you can prep materials as long as another teacher knows what you're doing, but you need to be watching that all the kids are staying on the premises. You need to be watching that no kids are being bullied or that no physical fights are breaking out. Additionally, as a teacher, you are supervising your counselor. If your counselor is not sitting on the circle rug during a morning meeting or your counselor is not with you or is not helping the kids, that is your job to have a conversation with them and make sure that they understand what is expected of them. And if not, that's an issue where you then need to take to your director or your uh, supervisor on site. It's extremely important that you communicate if a counselor is not listening or respecting you as you are their supervisor. You also need to make sure that you are giving your counselor clear guidelines and understanding that they might need repetition as well. Some of your counselors are going to be 18 plus, really on top of it, and that'll be great. And some of your counselors are going to be younger. They might be 12, 13, 14 years old, and they might need you to repeat directions or clarify things. So it's really important as a teacher that you are taking on that supervisory role and you are managing your classroom, not just the students, but the counselors as well. Now, as a teacher, the other really important thing is, and we've talked about this before in other videos, is morning meetings. Morning meetings are extremely important. And if you're a teacher who is struggling with morning meetings, whether it's hard to get 
um, the kids to focus during a morning meeting, whether you don't have enough time to prep the content for that morning meeting, whether you just don't feel like you're hitting the right time frames for morning meetings, talk to your directors. We can model a morning meeting for you. We can go over some other ideas for morning meeting and we can try to support you as best we can. The last thing to note as a teacher before we go to our next video is that you want to make sure that you are talking with parents, but not too much. <laughs> if you have a parent drop off or pick up and there's a parent that wants to talk to you for a while, more than just a few minutes, that's when you need to direct them to your director. If your director is not on site, then you can tell them they can email or give a call. But it is not a reasonable expectation for a parent to talk to you for five plus minutes about their kid's specific sunscreen needs or their kid's specific likes and dislikes surrounding books or curriculum. If there is anything of note for a child, whether it be an allergy, an EpiPen, um, any type of um, exceptionality, neurodivergence, it is the parent's responsibility to make that known on the registration forms. And oftentimes if it's severe enough, they should be reaching out to me personally over email or phone call at that point. So there is no reason for them to have a long conversation with you and it might really impact your morning and set you guys behind. So that's, don't be afraid to direct parents to the director if you feel that they are trying to take too much of your personal attention. We absolutely want to support families and make sure that kids are all safe and happy and have everything they need to learn and be successful, but we also can't give undivided attention all throughout the summer to specific families. If you have any other questions about expectations or you need anything made clear to you, please feel free to reach out via email davinci.experience at gmail.com.